Welcome to Soul Cafe TV, where you will be uplifted, inspired, elevated, and enriched. Thank you for joining us. Please take the time to subscribe, like, and share our videos. Let others know about us, and if you ever want to be a contributor, the information is in the description. For more inspirational content, see the description for the link to Soul Cafe Radio. God bless you. Happy Monday everyone, welcome to this special presentation of Monday Manor. Today we want to look at the topic of the day after. For those of you who know about October 22nd, 1844, you will understand the context, but for others, you will appreciate the thought coming off of what I'm about to share today. So our thought and our focus on today is moving forward after disappointment. And this is one of those weekly encouragements as our theme is that for me personally, it hits very close to home. So for those of you who know and understand 1844, October 22nd, there were a group of people known as Millerites or Millerite Adventists or Adventists who thought that the Lord was coming, that Jesus was coming on or about October 22nd, 1844. And so they sold all their possessions, they renounce all their worldly things, and they dedicate themselves for the Lord. And on October 22nd, they anxiously waited the return of Jesus. And of course, you know the rest of that story. But it was what happened the day after that is a touchstone. Because while the great majority of the Adventist world turned back to their old lifestyle, their old ways, their old churches. A small handful banded together and went to the Lord and wanted to know what happened. And out of that, a movement began that encircled the world with a message that comes directly from Revelation 10. And as you hear new scripture, as you hear new thoughts throughout this presentation, please be sure to go over them. I'll have others in the description area. So please take a look down there. Friend of mine, have you ever prayed for a loved one who had cancer or some other type of sickness? Maybe they were rushed to the emergency room with some unknown affliction and you gathered friends and family, churches even, to pray for them. Well, I had one such situation way back in 1996 where a friend of mine you could call her family, really, was in the hospital dying of meningitis. And literally, her name was mentioned in churches from coast to coast, and people gathered together to pray for her. I myself went before the Lord in tears and agony and bargaining. Lord, spare her. Lord, this, that, and the third. And of course, being a theme of this Monday manner, she passed. That reminds me of... David's son through Bathsheba. Now again, if you know that story, you know that that child came about from an illicit relationship that David had with another man's wife. And he actually had that man killed so he could have his wife. So sin upon sin, crime upon crime. And that child took sick shortly after birth. And David fasted and prayed and prayed and fasted. And he probably went before the Lord like I did with bargaining. Lord, I know I messed up royally, pardon the pun. And you, I know you, Lord, you said you know me and you love me. And I've done things that are pleasing in your sight. I've lived up to your ways up until this point, Lord. So if you would have mercy upon me, please spare my son. And on and on and on. And of course, to no avail. But the amazing thing, my friends, the amazing thing in this experience is that when the baby died, David didn't. He didn't go into some dark place. He didn't crawl into a hole. He didn't jump into the grave when they were burying his son. Rather, he dusted off himself. He took off his sackcloth and ashes, proverbially, of course, speaking. And he ended his fast. And he was rejoicing. And his servants were wondering, My Lord, when the child was alive and sick, you were fasting and praying in the morning. Surely now that he died, you should be in a worse condition. 
And David said something that was very pivotal. You know, you're right. I should be. However, however, nothing that I do, no grieving, no mourning, no agonizing, would have him come back to me. But you know what? I will go to him. And that right there is a takeaway, my friends, that should really, should really captivate our hearts. You see, no matter what it is, the day after a disappointment, the day after a tragedy, the day after dashed hopes could either go one of two ways. You could either take the path of going into misery, going into agony, cutting the world off and doing all types of things. Or you can dust yourself off, take off your sackcloth and move forward. You see, the family of my friend, my dear sister, they came back from her bedside. They came back from her funeral. They came back from her burial. Not in mourning and in weeping, that daughter, that sister, was gone. They came back rejoicing, knowing that soon and very soon that they'll be together again. My friend, I will never forget the image of what I saw in their living room that day as they were rejoicing. I will never forget it as long as I live. In my mind, I'm that servant, my friends. I am that servant who's asking King David. But David, and here they were, rejoicing, having songs of praise and commiserating with each other, encouraging each other, laughing even. And I think that was one of the things that got under my skin at the time. How could they be laughing when this sweet girl was gone? But you see, my friends, their hope wasn't dashed the day after. Their hopes wasn't spoiled the day after because, again, they had done all that they could. Now, their responsibility was to leave it in his hands. And that is what I want to end today with. My friends, just like back then in 1844, you would have said, Lord, I'm done with the world. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. And you dedicated the rest of your life, the rest of your days, to being on the Lord's side. And as summer turned into fall, and fall into winter, and winter into spring, you held on to your hope that Jesus is coming soon. And when you saw signs like 9-11, like 2020, and so on, your hope was elated, your hope sprung, as they say, eternal, only for some leak to be there in that fountain and that water just dissipate. Oh, my friends, but here's the thing. Oh, my friends, here's the thing. No matter what you went through, the ebbs and flows of your experience, you're holding on while others are letting go, while others no longer have the thrill, the joy that animated them back in the day. You know that God is able. And so even though your eyes would have been stinged with the pain of loss, the pain of hurt, the pain of rejection, the pain of neglection, here you are today, standing on the Lord's side the day after. May God continue to bless your heart. May God continue to encourage you, not just this Monday, but every day after as we continue to look up and lift up our heads because we know our redemption draws nigh. God bless. Mm-hmm.